the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. May his grace and peace be with you. May he fill our hearts with joy. Almighty God, to you all our hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Bless the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and to Jesus the people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord our God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, you receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray together the calling for ascension printed in the bowl. <clears throat> Almighty God, your Son Jesus Christ ascended to the throne of heaven, that he might rule over all things as Lord. Keep the church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of his peace, and bring the whole of creation to worship at his feet who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray the prayer for Mother's Day. Lord, bless her with love, hope, and faith as she goes about her days. Bless her with the eyes to see that all she does for her children and her family provides her ways to glorify you. We pray that she would be blessed in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the Book of Acts. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods, that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward him, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them, they said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. The word of the Lord. And Thank you, you God. God. This morning is Psalm 47, 
on page 764. I will read to the asterisk and I ask you to finish the verse. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Show God the pride of the Lord. For the Lord most high is to be feared. He is the great king over all the earth. He subdues the peoples under us. And the nations under our feet. He chooses our inheritance for us. The pride of Jacob will be us. God has gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of the ram's horn. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing, sing praises to our king. Sing, sing praises. For God is king of all the earth. Sing, sing praises with all your skill. God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The nobles of the peoples have gathered together. And the people of God have been The rulers of the earth belong to God. And he is our name God. And together in prayer. Let us say you, God of the Lord, you have all the
stand for the gospel. The Lord be with you. Also with you. The holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending unto you what my Father promised, to stay here in the city until you have been clothed with the power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. The Gospel of Christ. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. It is traditional to extinguish the Paschal candle after the Gospel on Ascension Day as our Lord has ascended and He is no longer earthly with us. And the Paschal candle is a sign of His being with us physically here on earth. Happy Mother's Day. I hope you will take time today to pay respect to your mothers, to res pay respect to people in your life who embodies the grace and wisdom we associate with godly mothers. The Bible speaks highly of mothers who raise children and guide their families in a righteous manner. In the book of Prophets we read, A mother opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. Proverbs also says, Her children respect and bless her, her husband joins in with words of praise. Many women have done wonderful things, but you have outclassed them all. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was at a young age when she learned from an angel that she would give birth to the long-awaited Messiah. Her role as the mother of the incarnate God brought her grief as well as joy, as we can only imagine what it must have been like for her to witness our Lord Jesus on the cross. Elizabeth was a godly woman who was righteous in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly. And yet she and her husband seemed to be unable to conceive a child. But in God's time, and for his purpose, her prayers were answered, and she gave birth to John the Baptist. Hannah is one of the most inspiring mothers in the Bible, although her story is less well known. Despite years of patience and prayer, she remained unable to have a child. One day, in her deep anguish, she prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly, and God answered her prayer. Her character truly shone forth when, in gratitude to God, she dedicated her newborn son to God's service. 
Her son would one day become one of Israel's greatest prophets, Samuel. Sarah, the wife of Abraham, is one of the great matriarchs of the Bible, yet she did become a mother until very late in life. In fact, her reaction to God's promise that she would have a son was to laugh, as recorded in Genesis 18. Nevertheless, she did give birth to a son, and her lineage would include Jesus Christ. It's interesting how this discussion played out. So let me read Genesis 18, 12 to 15. When told that she would have a child, Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I have grown old, shall I have pleasure, my husband being old also? And the Lord God said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I surely bear a child since I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord God? At the appointed time I will return to you according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied it, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. And the Lord God said, Yes, you did. You did laugh. There are other mothers spoken about in the Bible, some of them righteous, some not so but all used by God for his purpose. Today, as we give thanks for the mothers in our lives, consider how each of us can embody the traits that define a godly mother, which many of you do. Well, you all do, but many, many of the traits. I just put my foot in my mouth. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to make a note and change the wording on, on this. Traits of a godly mother. Love. Patience. Joy. Kindness. Cheerfulness. Selflessness. Prayerful. Faithfulness. Etc. These are attributes we should all strive to have and share with our children. For it was God who created our inward parts and knitted us together in our mother's womb. I've gathered up several godly mother quotes from various sources. And I'm going to read them all. Author Elizabeth George says, A godly mother is one who loves the Lord her God with all her heart, soul, mind, and strength, and then passionately, consistently, and unrelentlessly teaches her children to do the same. Abraham Lincoln, No man is poor who has a godly mother. Billy Graham, only God himself fully appreciates the influence of a Christian mother in the molding of character in her children. Henry Ward Beecher, an American clergyman born in 1813. I like this one. Well, I like them all, but the mother's heart is the child's school. A mother's heart is the child's school. C.S. Lewis, British author, scholar, and Anglican lay theologian, said a woman's heart should be so close to God that a man should have to chase him to find her. A woman's heart should be so close to God that a man should have to chase him to find her. And an unknown author, motherhood is a million little moments that God weaves together with grace, redemption, laughter, tears, and most of all, 
We are now sitting together, nobody knows what the way.
our worldwide Anglican prayer cycle, we pray for the Anglican Church of Burundi. In our diocesan prayer cycle, we pray for All Saints Cathedral and St. James Armville. In our DCS prayer cycle, we pray for St. Luke's O'Leary. We pray for our own parish of Milton and Rustigo and the parish of Wolf Island, Ontario. On our parish prayer list, we pray for God's gift of health and healing for Anna Carr, Leah Jane Hoover, <coughs> Pat Willis, Nancy Rackham, Helen Strilioff, Canon Dick Steves, Paul Ceritti, <coughs> Brian Crabb, and Mark Hurd. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, <coughs> we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have done.
and this one. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ, and make them new, and bring us to that city of light, where you dwell with all your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior's commanded and taught us, we are bold to say.
eternal giver of love and power, your Son, Jesus Christ, has sent us into all the world to preach the gospel of his kingdom. Confirm us in this mission and help us to live the good news we proclaim through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Power working in us to do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Please stand for our closing hymn, God be with you till we meet again.